Welcome back to the market. The Sensex currently at 60,530, the Nifty 50 above 18,000 comfortably, so lots of strength in the broader markets as well. Now, we were speaking a short while back about new age companies and quite a few of them hitting the equity markets. Sanjeev Bikchandani spoke to ET now for the first time since the Zomato IPO and he spoke about his investments and if he senses a froth in the IPO market. Listen in. No, no, I'll tell you, see, we, we, we sort of uh, work bottom up. We meet a thousand startups a quarter, maybe 300 a month. We have a team doing it. Uh, and whatever looks good, interesting, good founders, good idea, getting some customer traction, you know, we study deeper. And then maybe we go into maybe, maybe two or three each quarter after meeting a thousand. So we are discerning. Uh, we go in early. Uh, and as the companies progress, we invest further and further. So in Zomato, for example, we first put in four and a half crores, then 13 crores, then another 13 crores, then 60 crores. And in the fifth round, uh, there was a co-investor. So I think uh, the credit for uh, all these successes, uh, the ones that are emerging, goes more to the founders and the management teams than to us. Uh, our job is to spot them. And, you know, so the secret of early stage investing, successful early stage investing is to invest behind founders and teams who are going to succeed anyway, right? with you or without you. Right? Sure, if you're around, maybe you can make them succeed 2% more, 3% faster, but that's more at the margins. Really, the team has to be good enough, uh, chasing a good enough idea and a good enough opportunity uh, that they will succeed anyway. Because see, money is, at the end of the day, a commodity. Right? It is entrepreneurship that is rare. And if you can spot good entrepreneurs and you get in behind them and they let you in, then you probably have a recipe for success in over a decade or so. Yeah, and, and, the, and the markets also spoke, right? Like during the IPO, we had someone like Dr. Ashwat Damodran, for example, talking about a 40 rupee uh, valuation. But uh, uh, look at what exactly it is uh, that the markets actually came out with. And that's for everyone to see. But now you've got Policy Bazaar coming out. You use the same lens for that because that's going to be the next big IPO. Again, policy was that we see we did not go in with the notion that we have got some we need to have something in the insurance sector. We just met the founders, uh, saw the idea, figured out that it could work. It's a it's a very powerful value proposition, right? Uh, and uh, we went in behind them. Okay, and uh, the, the thing about us is that look, we are we invested from our balance sheet in both cases, right? Which means that we don't have a fund. Uh, which needs to go back in seven, eight, ten years to somebody else. So we are not in a hurry to exit. Right now, India requires patient capital because from inception to IPO can take a decade or more, as we have seen. Right? Uh, I mean, Zomato was founded in 2008, it went public after 13 years. Right? Uh, which means that if you have a fund that is an eight year fund uh, and you go in as the first check at founding, uh, you probably want to exit before the investment comes to fruition actually, right? So we have benefited by the fact that we didn't get nervous after year six or year seven, I, think I got to find an exit. You know, we, uh, we can play the long game. I think playing the long game is what is required in India by, uh, by early stage venture capital. Mr. Bhiktanani, it must be said, you know, that uh, uh, there are many IPOs that are coming out. This is the year of the exits when it comes to startup ecosystem from a Paytm to a Nika to a Delivery to a Mobiquick uh, to Policy Bazaar, of course. Oyo Rooms has also now filed. And all of this is also now happening at a time when, yes, you have excessive liquidity. There's a liquidity glut. But at a time when we have also started talking about is there froth in the IPO market? Can the latter uh, play a spoiled sport? in the next month or two, because you will see at least two to three big IPOs from the startup ecosystem. Look, every company is different. And institutional investors are smart. And the truth is, if it's a loss-making company, then 75% um, of the offering has to go to institutional investors. Right? And institutional investors are smart. They, have, they do the analysis properly, they study it, and only then they go in. So it's not as if, uh, you know, they're going to go into something with the eyes closed. So if an IPO, if a company that's lost making is going public and 75% of the offering will be taken by institutions and the IPO succeeds, you can be sure that uh, the institutions know what they're doing. Okay. 
So, but you know what's really fascinating about this rally, especially when, you know, when we talk about the 60,000 and the, and the new records of the Nifty and all of that, is that for the first time, this is not just an FII-led rally, this is not just about foreign investors, but the participation of the retail investors. Earlier we used to say, when retail investor comes, the party is going to be It's different this time round. What is this going to also mean for all these IPs? No, I think what happened in Zomato was that Zomato's customers uh, participated in the stock market for the first time in their lives because they believed in the company. So the feedback we got from the online brokerages uh, was that uh, in the week before the Zomato IPO, we saw a record number of new account openings. Right. So Zomato seemed to have catalyzed a very large number of millennials, young people, uh, who had never ever participated in equity market earlier to, to start a DMAT account and apply for the Zomato IPO. And I think that is more a, you know, I believe in Zomato, I'm a Zomato customer, let me do it kind of statement as opposed to, uh, you know, I'm a retail investor uh, and therefore let me participate in 50 IPO statement. So let's see what happens with the other, uh, you know, companies. But I would imagine that um, all these startups, at least their customers, will be somewhat interested in uh, participating. I don't mean this flippantly then when I say that using the same logic then that uh, Nika, for example, can make, uh, uh, attract more women and uh, younger uh, g g ladies uh, to the stock markets. And I don't mean this I hope flippantly. It does. I, I hope it does. I hope it does. It'll be very good. But let's wait and watch. But I hope it does. And many of them have already participated in Zomato IPO. I want to ask customers. you one question. You know, you, you've seen it all from Nokri.com to what you've done with InfoEdge India. Now you're handholding Zomato, this policy bazaar, this, that. Um, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, do you think our Nifty, our Sensex is going to look very, very different? Or do you think we well, should look, also start talking about maybe later to have a parallel of a NASDAQ, like some kind of an index for these startups? So, you know... Uh, a few weeks back, uh, just for a lark, I did some research on uh, the evolution of the Sensex over the last 20, 30, 40 years. Right? I, was in, I think Sensex started in 1980, if I'm not wrong. Maybe was it, I forget. But you know, the, the Bombay Stock Index. Uh, and actually, there are very few companies that have stayed constant in the Sensex uh, over the last 30 years. Right? Uh, people have come and gone. Right? So these things happen and, you know, we don't realize it. So could it look different? Answer is yes, it could. Will it? I don't know. Right? Because to actually be a part of the Sensex or the Nifty, I think many of these companies will have to be a high market cap, be highly traded and, and see profitable and growing. I, I'm not sure whether the Nifty or the Sensex will permit a loss-making company. Now, all these companies going uh, public are... I think capable of making a profit in the next two or three years. And that's a good thing. So what will happen? Uh, I can't say what will happen. What might happen? Yes, it might. Do you think the Indian investor is willing to wait for 10 to 12 years for these companies to turn profitable? I'm taking a leap from what you just said. In the case of Amazon and America, they did. But do you think in India, we will be as patient? No, I don't think, I don't think it'll be 10 to 12 years. I think many of these companies, uh, you know, they're talking about two to three years. So something like Zomato, for example, they can turn profitable when they want to. For them, you know, making a small loss is a matter of strategy or making a profit is a matter of strategy, right? They want to grow faster. So they're saying we'll take a loss for a few years. It's okay. Um, I think it's similar with Policy Bazaar, right? The others I've not seen so deeply too. I don't know them that well. But I think very many of these companies can be profitable pretty quickly. Okay, so you, so you think, because you know, 10 years, what 10 years was uh, in the 90s and early 2000s, it seems uh, it's not the same anymore in the 21st century, right? Because time just moves faster with the technology, the innovation, the disruptions that we're seeing. Uh, but Sanjeev Bikchandani, since I have you, now this is your full-time job and InfoEdge India's full-time job to spot the trends and uh, the next Zomatos, etc. For a retail investor, what do they need to look at? So I think uh, you should look at the underlying. How fast is the growth? What is the unit economics like? Uh, is there a lot of secondary in the IPO? Or is it only a small secondary, mostly primary? Who's selling? Right? You should look at uh, what's the path to profit. Right? Uh, and then get your goals clear. 
that do you want to go in and flip or do you want to go in and stay? Um, now, go in and flip is a different animal which I don't understand too well because we have never flipped. Uh, but going in to stay, then, you know, a good IPO, chances are you won't get too much allocation in the IPO, but you can start from there. And then over a period of two, three, four, six months, you can do a SIP and keep on accumulating and get a good average price and then, then stay for the long haul. You know, there is a clarion call in the, within members of the startup ecosystem to have direct overseas listing. It's to prevent maybe flipping as well. Freshworks, you know, has listed at the NASDAQ, it's created 500 crore but these overnight with its IPO. But as you all know, many of these companies have all flipped. Do you think India should allow direct overseas listing? Will it help in uh, keeping our IP here within our shores? So look, uh, I mean, it's a tough one. There are arguments on both sides. But I'll say one thing. Uh, capital is a heat-seeking missile. Right? It, it seeks out opportunity. It, seeks out, it smells return. And it goes where there's opportunity. Now, conventional wisdom would have suggested that hey, Zamato should list in the US. But Zamato decided to list in India. Right? And it's, it's, there are at least 20 top bracket institutional investors who had never invested in India earlier who opened accounts in India because of the model, right? So if you actually have a stable of great companies listing in India, you will find it doesn't matter whether you're listing in India or US because capital will come here. Uh, let me also tell you, if you look at the Zomato valuation in India, I don't believe they've got a much better valuation in the US. I don't believe they've got a much better stable of investors in the US. So I don't know. You know, um, the other lesson from Zomato is, the two, the two things I found fascinating. One was that they gave the allocation to 118 um, investors. And, you know, I remember that file the night the, it was uploaded to the stock exchange. It was 13 pages long. Do you see that trend continuing with the IPOs that, you know, they'll want to give to everybody, all the institutional investors that have applied? So, look, it's a relationship thing. Uh, where, uh, you know, you want to actually give something to as many people as possible because you don't want to turn away anybody, right? It's, it's, uh, it's not a polite thing to do, right? Somebody wants to buy your shares and you say, hey, I won't give it to you, right? Uh, and uh, therefore, that's a tough job for the, for the banks, uh, for, the, for the management, that, look, who do I say no to, right? Uh, and should I say no to anybody? When somebody says he wants to invest in your company or he or she, I mean, they're expressing confidence in you. Right? So from a founder's perspective, from a management perspective, uh, somebody who invests in our companies, you know, we say, hey, he's trusted us with his or her money. And therefore, it's a response. So we've got to do our best. Right? Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we know Zamato did favor, uh, you know, I think long only investors over, uh, over pure hedge funds because they wanted people to stay rather than flip who will a long-term story. So it's not as they give everybody, but they give uh, everybody who had a certain bar. And the other thing that one must point out is the pricing. Obviously, Zomato got, uh, with the power of retrospectivity, the pricing that could command the kind of listing premium that it did. Uh, looking back, it left value for investors on the table, though they may have been naysayers and critics as well. That should be the other lesson, I would imagine, for the upcoming IPOs. So look, I think it's a good idea to have a successful IPO. Now, a successful IPO is an IPO where there's a bit of a pop, where, you know, people who actually invest in the IPO believe they have won. It's trading at a higher price. Right? If it trades lower, you're not left with a good feeling. Right? And a successful IPO and stock markets is also not just about numbers, also about sentiment. I feel good having invested in the matter of IPO. Zomato IPO went well. Now, 10 other startups can list and hopefully the IPOs will go well. Right? If Zomato had not done well, if it traded below IPO price, uh, I think there'd be a problem in sentiment. Right? Uh, and it will reinforce the theory, hey, you know, Indian startups should list in the US. Right? So Zomato being the pioneer, being the front runner, being the, uh, being the one that's going first to the market, I think had a huge responsibility. And I think they've done well. The new trend that you're seeing of founders also launching private equity funds, uh, you know, angel investment has become more popular among H&Is as well. 
venture capitalists are raising big funds for India. Maybe you know China smashing its consumer internet companies is helping India's cause. How will InfoEdge India stand out? No, we don't. We just do our work. Uh, we don't try to stand out. We focus on our customer. We focus on building our business. Uh, and we keep at it uh, day after day, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year. And that's what we've done for the last 15 years or 20 years or 24 years since ever since we began. And we intend to continue doing that. Just focus on your work. So market goes up, you run the business. Market goes down, you run the business. Market goes sideways, you run the business. We just run the business. Um, that was Sanjeev Bhikchandani speaking about quite a few things, in fact, uh, that could uh, be of use to you as a retail investor as well, uh, specifically what to look forward to uh, when you're choosing the company that you want to invest in. Now, 